How you doing? Welcome to one of the most exciting hours you can ever spend anywhere. And that is, we're going to talk tonight about ten principles on how to effectively fulfill your dream. You know, the saddest man on the planet and the poorest person on this planet is a human without a dream. If you don't have a dream, you are really poor. You see, no matter how much money you don't have, as long as you got hope and a dream, there's always the possibility of gaining the success you're dreaming about. And yet, the most frustrated person in the world is a person with a dream, but hasn't experienced the reality of that dream. Now, I believe that everybody here tonight has a dream, or had a dream, or still you're carrying one in your heart. As a matter of fact, I know that of all the 5.7 billion people on the planet, including the 94,000 that was born last night, every human being has been birthed with dreams and the ability to dream from God. That is why young babies, children, toddlers, constantly are always dreaming wild dreams. How many of you ever dreamed, dreamed dreams before? How many of you ever thought of being a fireman or a nurse or a doctor when you were 10 years old? Let me see your hands. How many of you have been dreaming of building or flying an airplane or going on the moon when you were 5 years old? Let me see your hands. How about 15 years old? How many of you ever dreamt of being in charge of a country when you were 14? Let me see your hands. Yeah, I wanted to run all the countries in the world. Everybody dreams. As a matter of fact, there are people here tonight who are still frustrated because their dream is still as far as it was when they were 20 years old. And the reason why people's dreams don't come to pass is because they haven't learned how to exercise the principles that are designed in God's creation to fulfill dreams. Now let me explain for a moment what a principle is. Because principles are different from facts. A principle is a law that is established to create the environment to successfully produce the performance of the promised. And what I mean by that is every manufacturer builds into his product principles by which that product functions, and if you follow those principles, everything that the manufacturer promises you, you'll experience. For example, your automobile was built on certain principles, and that principle uh, product was placed in the automobile before you received the car. Uh, when they built the engine of the automobile, for example, they built it to operate on gasoline, maybe unleaded, right? And uh, be because they did that, when you bought the car, the principle was already built into the engine. So you couldn't decide to put what you felt like into the car. You had to put what the manufacturer designed the car to operate on. That's why if you like apple juice or orange juice or pineapple juice, the car doesn't care. It likes unleaded gasoline. So if you want the car to function for you, what you have to do then is submit to the principle of the automobile manufacturer. And once you do what the principle commands you to do, the car will function for you. So success is really based on the obedience to principles. Write that down. It's a very important, simple concept. Success is based on obedience to principles. In other words, being successful is not luck. Being effective in your life is not a matter of being a lucky person or a fortunate person. Success and top performance in life is literally a simple process of obedience to principles. If you do everything the manufacturer commands you to do, then you should get from the product what they promise you in top performance. And so, even as we see that in the normal creation or manufacturing of human uh, products, the same thing is true about what God created. The plants around me are products of principle. That is why God really doesn't create trees anymore. God does not come down to earth and create trees every day. God put the principle of tree production in a seed. And he did that from the beginning in Genesis chapter 1 in the Bible. And ever since that day, trees have been following a principle. The principle is you take a seed and you put it in the right environment, and what happens? Automatically, a tree comes out of the seed. You'll never see a, a seed praying to produce a tree. They don't toil, they don't spin, they don't worry. As a matter of fact, you just put them in the right environment, and here comes the tree. 
And that's the way God created all life. You know, the animal kingdom operates on the same concept of principle. Everything in life is built to function by principles. Now, what is a principle? Once again, a principle is a fixed law that is established to guarantee the performance of a product. Once you obey the principle, success is automatic. That makes life exciting. Now, principles are established to make life simple. Say that with me. Principles are established to make life simple. In other words, principles are established to simplify life. And if you and I can learn the principles of everything, we'll simplify our lives. You see, when you don't know principles, you have to experiment. When you don't know the principle of a thing, you have to literally trial and error it through life. For example, because you know what a car demands, then you don't have to think twice of what to put in the car. Is that right? You don't pray, should I put juice or, or to tomato juice? Or, Father, should I put tomato today? Or should I put orange juice? No. You just know what to put in that, so you know where to go for it. And automatically, when your car gauge, gasoline fuel gauge is low, you go directly to the station, don't you? And you don't pray about it. Do you? You don't fast about it. Hello? You know, the reason why we pray and fast is because we ain't sure about the principles. Now, let me give you another example of how powerful principles function. In the book of Hebrews, written by uh, one of the great scholars of Scripture, in chapter 1, there is a statement made about principles. And it says in verse 2, that God created the universe, and through Jesus Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, God created all things. And then it says, and He sustains or maintains, or operates everything by the word of His power. That's a very important statement. It's talking about principles. It actually implies that everything God created, God has placed a system of word by which all things in the universe are supposed to function. And that also means then that if you and I will learn how the creation is supposed to function, we can live simple and effective lives. Everything God created, He has a word in it that keeps it functioning, including humans. That is why He sustains how many things? All things. How many? All things. How? By the word of His power or the power of His word. That means the trees are operating by a word God put in them. The animals are functioning by a word God put in them. It's amazing how geese can fly from the north to the south and find their way every year to their, to their birthing grounds and, uh, and their reproductive grounds and back to where they came from in the north. I mean, you see these birds without instructors, without teachers, without professors. They just know what to do. The whales in the ocean, they just know what to do. The plants, they grow up toward the sun, not down toward the earth. Everything has, it seems, a built-in word from God. Now, God did the same thing with humans. You see, God wanted all of us to function according to principles and precepts that are established for us to be successful. Success in life has nothing to do with money or food, or clothes, or cars, or wealth that we accumulate. Success has to do with being exactly what you were born to be. Accomplishing exactly what you were born to accomplish. That is success. So you can do everything and still be a failure if you didn't do what you were born to do. So how do you accomplish and become what you were born to do? You have to discover those precepts and those principles by which we're supposed to function. Now, that is why when God created the first man, there was no instructor in the garden. There was no written book called the Bible in the Garden of Eden. There was no revelation from no prophet or preacher or evangelist in the garden. What God had in the garden was His Word. As a matter of fact, the intimacy between Adam and the Word was so close that the Bible says Adam would walk and talk with God in the cool of the day. Do you know what God sent into the garden to talk to Adam? It says the voice of the Lord came into the garden. What a wonderful way to live. 
to have a permanent voice of God with you all the time. Saying, go here, do that, don't touch that, turn right, turn left, duck, stand, jump, leap, stop. I mean, just the voice constantly giving you instructions that help you make your way through the maze of alternatives in life. Principles, therefore, are established to make life easy and simple. God is not a mysterious God, even though he's a mystery to us. God is a very simple God. Obey me, live. Disobey me, die. Is that complicated? No. Now, obey me means what? Obey my word and live. Disobey my word and die. How does he maintain all things? By the word of his power. What did he give Adam in the first instance? His word. What did, he, what did Adam disobey that caused us to fall apart? The word of God. What did God send into the world to correct the problem? The Word. In other words, Jesus Christ is the embodiment of the principles of God to restore man to a simple way of living. That is why in John chapter 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and that Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, we beheld his glory. So what did God send to solve your problem? The word. What is word? The word, actually, the word logos, in the first chapter of John, write this down, is the word logos is what we de- translate the word word. Now this word logos, L-O-G-O-S, if you look at the Greek rendering of the word, it can be uh, translated as expression of a thought. Which means God sent his thoughts back to earth, wrapped up in flesh called Jesus. So that we could once again put on the thinking of God. That is why Jesus says, if you believe my words, you shall live. Now, I like David. David was a great politician, a tremendous king. And David himself really was one of the rare people that God said was after his own heart. Now, what made God call David a man after my own heart? I believe God loved David because David did not seek riches and wealth and power and influence. David kept on asking God for one simple thing. Guess what it was? If you read his favorite book, which is the book of Psalm, you'll find this all through the book. Teach me thy ways. Teach me thy precepts. Teach me thy statutes. Teach me thy word. Teach me thy principles. All of these words actually can be described as the same thing. David was after God's principles. David says, if you teach me thy principles, then I will prosper and preserve my life. David understood that the key to success is learning the precepts of God. The principles of God. The ways of God. Now here's something interesting. The word statutes that David used for the, for the word word is a proper word. The Hebrew word statue is the same word for character. 